I would like to get into today's sermon, but before this I have uh, a joke for you. Uh, many of us know a mannequin. A mannequin is that kind of statue on which clothes are displayed normally wherever they sell clothes. So this one said, I just bumped into a mannequin and said, sorry. Then I said, oh, I thought you were a person. Then I realized I was still speaking to the mannequin. Yeah, but on, on Sunday I was talking about a walk of faith and that was part one. Today we want to continue with that and I'm sure you're going to be so blessed. I believe this week you've been walking that walk of faith. Personally, my, my walk has even gone higher. There are things that I'm just excited about, things that God is doing, awesome things, great things. So today if there is a subtopic that we would have today, it would be making the unseen tangible that's making the unseen tangible uh, we'll read from hebrews chapter 11 uh, verse 1 to 2 manu will read for us from the amplified and then we'll read verse 3 from nlt but we'll read it's 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 hard to talk about faith and not talk about hebrews chapter 11 yes so manu can read for us now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see. Stop there. He's saying it is assurance, confirmation, title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see. In other words, these are things that you can't touch, things that are not seen. Faith is what makes them a reality. I like that the Amplified uses the word title deed. That word title deed, if you have a title deed, it means you own the land or you, 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 you own that property. You, you, you don't need to see the property to prove that I, I own it. The title deed is enough to prove that I have it. Yeah, let's go on. And the conviction of the reality, faith perceiving as real fact, what is not revealed to the senses what is not revealed to the senses when we were on last sunday as we were sharing we talked about uh we were reading how he says that we live by faith and not by our physical senses not by the things that we see that we live by faith here he's saying that it is it, it, that it it is it is what makes real these things that have not been revealed to our senses. It is faith that makes them real. Let's read verse 3. Let's read verse 3 in NLT. NLT, the New Living Translation. Verse 3 of the same. By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That, we, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command and what we see did not come from anything that can be seen this is this is the work of faith many times as human beings we we think that if we cannot see it it does not exist but before we even go into explaining about faith and all this right now the whole world is at standstill because of coronavirus None of you can see the coronavirus with your naked eyes. So by the mere fact that you cannot see it, it does not mean it's not real. It has put the whole world to a standstill. A lockdown like we've never seen in our entire lives. We've never seen this. Whatever has put <laughs> us on hold is not something that we, we see. Now, in your house or your car, wherever you're watching from, wherever you're streaming from, there, there are radio waves. You cannot see these radio waves. This, the, the, the broadcast, maybe you got on after we had started. It is not that when you switched on your phone, your laptop, your TV, that that's when they started coming into your house. There are these waves of internet, radio waves, microwaves, they are all over. And it is when you switch on your gadget, you turn on your gadget, that is when you realize the effect what you're hearing from your radio or what you're seeing from your TV is something that has been brought about by something that you do not see. Look at a microwave. Many of you have microwaves in your kitchen or in your home. A microwave does not use heat to warm food. 
it has no heater anywhere but you put your food in a microwave and the food becomes hot because of waves that cannot be seen even if you if your glasses see through on the microwave you try to look in you're not going to see any fire you're not going to see any heat but it is that that you do not see that brings the effect that you can see that brings the effect you can feel and this is going to be very key for us in understanding how faith works and understanding how to make the unseen tangible to bring the unseen to the realm of senses it is raining we're in a rainy season last sunday it was raining it's raining again but i believe you can hear me yeah so uh, faith faith is the evidence of things not seen yeah it is the evidence of things hoped for now tl osborne a great great evangelist tl osborne used to say hope paints the picture hope gives you the picture yeah faith makes it real faith makes it tangible when when we many times you'll hear people preach down hope people will tell you not to hope people will tell you don't raise her hopes when when we go to hospital and we are ministering to the sick somebody will tell you don't raise her hope but you see faith makes what you hope for a reality hope is very necessary on the journey of faith in this walk of faith hope plays a great role hope paints the picture it paints the picture and there are many realities in god that transcend the sin and the sensual realm many realities that 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 transcend the the the, the, the seen or the the visible an example i can give to you is our salvation you being born again there are many things that we have in our christian work that cannot be put in a test tube they cannot be put in a lab so if whatever we are talking about is what can be proven by science what can be proven by these parameters what can be measured in this we miss a life that god has only provided for his children we miss it because we are basing our lives on whatever we can see whatever we can hear whatever we can touch but there is a life that transcends that there is a life beyond that and that is what we are going to experience in this as we talk about this this faith walk uh, many truths in christianity are being confirmed by science but there are some signs there are some signs will never confirm it doesn't mean they are not true it doesn't mean they are not real there are many things that science is confirming right now you see when we read the bible we can tell that the earth is round but science discovered this not many years ago i think it's not more than 700 years ago that science discovered that the globe is that the earth is a globe they used to think that the 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 earth was just a plane then they discovered it was a globe but you see when we read in when we read in in job we read in many parts of the bible is telling us how the earth spins he shows you that the earth is a globe so when science discovered it many christians feel justified when science proves things but there are things that science will never be able to prove science cannot prove that you are forgiven scientifically we can't even prove morals you see scientifically you can't prove that it is wrong to steal or it is right to we, we cannot prove some of these things now that is where our faith comes in because faith helps us to see what human eyes can see faith makes a reality of these things bill johnson said this and i've had a number of people say it a, a different way but faith does not deny the existence of a problem faith denies the problem's influence over us faith does not deny faith does not deny that you that, that right now that the coronavirus is around people are in fear faith does not deny that what faith does faith does not allow it to have influence on us that is why faith is referred to in ephesians chapter 6 when he's talking about the armor of god he refers to faith as the shield he says taking on the shield of faith 
In other words, faith does not say, there are no fiery deaths, there are no arrows that are being shot at me. There are arrows that are being shot. Uh, let, let's read that. Let's, let's read Ephesians 6.16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah. So faith is not saying that deaths are not there. It is not saying the arrows are not there. But it is stopping them from reaching us. This is the more reason our walk as Christians has to be a faith walk. Jesus told the disciples in John chapter 16, I think it's verse 39. He told them, be of good cheer. He told them, in this world you shall face tribulation, but be of good cheer. Yeah, verse 33. He says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In other words, they were, he didn't say that because you're men of faith, tribulation is not going to come. But why does he say, be of good cheer? It is because I've overcome the world. And if you base your faith in the fact that I've overcome already, this, these tribulations are not going to have influence over you. You're going to stay afloat amidst all this. This is very key for us to understand. It is very key for us to understand these things. These are life for you as a child of God. The spirit world is real. The spirit world is real. Uh, last week we read, we read Romans chapter Romans chapter 10, verse 17. I think we'll read it again. We'll read Romans 10, 17. I know we'll read for us. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's try it in the NLT. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Yeah. So he's telling us faith comes by hearing. But hearing comes by the word of God. In other words, before you receive the word of God, you can't hear. You can't hear beyond this realm of the physical hearing. But when you receive the word of God, you start hearing things that people cannot hear. Like I've said, you may not scientifically, or there may not be an empirical way of proving that I'm born again, that my sins were forgiven. But by faith, I reached out and held on to something that was unseen, but it became tangible to me. It became a reality. There is a joy that filled my heart that has never left. There is a peace that filled my heart that has never left. There is a freedom that filled my heart. And from that day, my life started changing. There are many things I've seen that began on that day. So, it may not be able to be proven in this sensual world. It may, somebody may say, oh, your emotions were played on. It was just an illusion. But you see, there are changes that came that they've even affected the physical life. There is a realm that I tapped in. Another example, even just on this walk, there have been many times that God has, that, that I've seen things in the spirit which are not real. Even just last week, just last week, there is somebody that we were praying for. I was, there is somebody that called... Uh, Bishop Isaiah, who is in Uganda, and I'm in Kenya. So Bishop Isaiah told me to call them. They are in a different county. They are not in Nairobi, where we are. So I was calling them with, with my wife. And you see, as I was just talking to them on phone, as I'm praying with them, I started seeing that their last born is a, 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 a boy. I started seeing the issues that the wife has with her legs, as I was praying for them on phone. You see, these are not things that are in the sin realm. These are not things, I've never seen them, I've never met them. I don't even know their face right now. But just as you are praying, this is to show that these are world. These are what the, the spirit world is real. But we are not going to experience the spirit world if we are not walking a walk of faith. It is in the walk of faith that we are going to experience this world that transcends it transcends the calamities that we go through in this world. It transcends the tribulation that come our way. It transcends the challenges that the earth throws at us. We are in a fallen world. That is why Romans chapter 12, verse 3, says that to each of us has been given the measure of faith. He's given to us the measure of faith. He's dealt to every man the measure of faith. Not a measure of faith 
Each of us has been given. Why has he given to each of us? Because he knows that the world we are in, we need to live above this world. We need to live above the challenges that come in this world. So many challenges will come to you as a Christian. And faith will not deny them, but faith will deny them influence. Faith will deny them influence. Somebody had a bumper sticker that said, if you're not depressed, then you're not paying attention. It is very true. And as long as I decide not to pay attention, I'll not be depressed. You see, the solution was there. Don't pay attention. Pay attention to what the word of God has said. So it's true there are many things that would cause us to be depressed. There are many things that would bring anxiety. There are many things that would bring stress. Faith does not deny that these things do not come. But faith denies them the influence they would have had over us. Hebrews 4.2 for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. This is a very amazing scripture. He's talking about the children of Israel who dwelt in the wilderness for 40 years, longer than they were meant to. He's saying that the word was preached to them, but it did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. The word was not mixed with faith. Man, faith is last week I defined faith as a treasure a treasure that he gives us a treasure a spiritual treasure that comes from him and he's saying the children of Israel had they had the word but he did not benefit them because it was not mixed with truth and 2nd Timothy 3 5 I'll go back to explain that scripture but let's read 2nd Timothy 3 5 having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away this is what religion does exactly religion is void of faith religion is just following certain norms religion is this every day we go to church and when we go to church we sing victory belongs to jesus he overcame the world there is power in the name there is power in the name there is joy deep down in my soul there is peace that i cannot lose then when such a season comes we speak contrary to what we've been singing we speak contrary to what we've been speaking it is because that word was not mixed with faith when the word is mixed with faith those things that are mentioned in the word which are unseen things become tangible to you faith makes these truths tangible that is what faith does so like he's saying that they did not mix the word with faith many things have been spoken to them god was taking them to the promised land so that is a word that they had had right from when they were leaving egypt but they didn't make it into the promised land except for joshua and caleb why they took that word but they didn't mix it with faith and you see that it was very evident on their journey every time they they got a challenge they complained and said oh moses did you bring us here to die you never hear that from joshua you never hear that from caleb why because the word that they got that they were being taken to the promised land it was mixed with faith for joshua and caleb when joshua and caleb heard that they are going to the promised land when they went to spy they came with a report and said surely the land is beautiful and the lord shall surely give it to us the other 10 spies came saying there are giants we were like grasshoppers they didn't see them overcoming joshua and caleb were not denying the fact but because the word that they had had that god would take them to the promised land was mixed with faith they saw a beautiful land they saw a land that they would take that is faith made these things tangible for them and indeed joshua and caleb were able to make it to the promised land even after all the 40 years where everyone else died this is what faith does and this is very key for us in this walk of faith it is in matthew chapter 7 when we read matthew chapter 7 we will look at how jesus was talking about a wise builder and the foolish builder he talks about the wise man building on a rock and the foolish man building on sand and he says the one that builds on sand it is so interesting that the one who builds on sand also hears the word because many times as christians when we read this we think that the one who builds on sand is the one who has never had the word no the bible says the foolish is the one who built the, is the one who built on sand 
He's the one who hears my sayings and does not do them. In other words, he hears the word of God, but he takes it casually. How many people around you, how many Christians around you take the word of God casually? We read it. We read it. We say, by his stripes we were healed. We say, God is my source. Then when that time comes, where we really need to see him as our source, we panic. Why? Because that word was not mixed with faith. It is something that we were just uttering. When that time comes, where we need to see his hand in our health, we talk about every other thing. Why? Because we didn't mix the word with faith. It became cliche. And that way we forfeit seeing this unseen reality, which is better, which transcends realities here on earth. We forfeit seeing them come to pass in our lives. Yet this is the privilege that we have as Christians, being able to see these things happen in our lives. The word of God is very key, but the word of God is to be mixed with faith. And like we were reading from Romans 10, 17, he says, faith comes by hearing, but hearing comes by the word of God. This, this, is, what, this, is, this, this is what happens. Yeah? When, we, when, we, when we study the word, when we get the word of God, the, we, we, we get hope. In other words, a picture is painted. Last Sunday, I told you of the testimony of how I was healed of sinusitis. But you see, getting the word, I started, there is a day I read the book of Acts. I read the book of Acts twice, from chapter 1 to chapter 28. Twice in one day, I was very sick. But you see, the more I read, a picture was painted. I was seeing the man at the gate beautiful. I'm like, wow, that man was crippled. His feet gained strength. Then I'm reading Peter meets the, Paul meets this man at Lystra and looking at him he perceived this man ha had faith and he told him rise up and walk. I'm like wow. I'm reading about Peter raising Dorcas from the dead. I'm reading about all these things. A picture is being painted. That is hope. A picture. This is a picture that was painted. As you get in the word of God what comes first is hope. So hope is the hearing. Your ears are now opened. And from hope now, with the picture painted, now faith kicks in. And now faith makes it evident in your day-to-day -day life. Now this, you know, you may wonder, why does faith kick in at this time? Yet you have said that to each of us is given the measure of faith. I may not be able to go into these details today, but if you, you can request for our teaching on spirit, soul, and body. But you'll understand that this faith, the measure of faith that you've received, it is the measure of faith in your spirit. As your soul is renewed, this faith comes up to, to, to work. This faith comes up now to affect your soul and your body. It is now beyond your spirit as a man. It comes out of there to affect your soul, to affect your day-to-day -day life. So you get into the word of God. As you get into the word of God, a picture is painted. There is hope. Then when that hope is, when, when you that hope comes, now the faith that comes in makes what you're hoping for a reality. It brings evidence to this that you're hoping for. That is why faith is not just mental ascent. Faith is not just positive thinking. Faith has a basis. And the basis is what God has said in his word. The basis, you see, I can come all the time and say, I have faith for my healing. I have faith for my healing. I have faith for my healing. I believe for my healing. So and so said, Pastor said, it is possible for us not to be sick. It is possible for us to be healed. What is the basis of that faith? Has the picture been painted? Where has that hope come from? When we get into the word of God and you see, like in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, you realize that by his stripes we were healed. You start thinking, so it is in past tense. We were healed. When did this happen? Actually, it happened on the cross. 2,000 years ago, I was healed. This disease that I'm carrying was put on him. 2,000 years ago, a picture is painted. This a picture painted. Now faith has something to work with. Now that picture can be made a reality. The more you meditate on it, the more you behold this picture, it becomes a reality. Another example is Jesus. Jesus comes walking on water. 
Jesus is the perfect word of God. He's the perfect explanation of the word of God. Jesus comes walking on water and Peter tells Jesus, bid me that I come to you. Bid me that I walk on this water. And Jesus told him to come. Peter gets on the water and when Peter gets on the water, he is looking at Jesus, the picture. He is looking at Jesus who is able to walk on water. And, long, and as long as his eyes were on Jesus, Peter walked on water. There was a storm. Because when Jesus came, there was a storm that was going on. As long as Peter didn't look at the storm, it does not mean that Peter denied that the storm was not there. He did not deny. But him looking at Jesus denied the storm influence on Peter. And when Peter took his eyes away from Jesus, hope, the picture that had been painted, and looked at the storm, looked at the coronavirus, looked at the businesses that have gone down, looked at the people that are getting depressed during this season, and turned away from this truth that transcends this, he started sinking. He started sinking. And Jesus held his hand and brought him back, and he was able to walk. That is what happens. That is what happens in the walk of faith. As long as we keep our eyes on the word, there's a picture that is painted. And as long as we keep there for so long, that picture becomes our reality in this work. Many things that are too good for this world to comprehend are in that realm, are in this work of faith. It is possible for you as a child of God never ever to need medication anymore. It is possible for you as a child of God to walk in divine health. It is possible for you as a child of God never to lack. It is possible for you as a child of God never to be stressed, never to be depressed. Not that there is no reason in the world, but faith opens your eyes to a higher realm. Faith opens your eyes to a higher possibility. There is a possibility beyond what the world has. That is why Peter says this in 2 Peter. He writes and he says that, he writes in 1 Peter and he says that, that we have not seen him, yet we rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Then in chapter 2, he tells us that he is about to put off his temple, or he's about to die, even as he's been shown. How can you be shown how you're going to die? And books of history have it that Peter died, crucified, upside down. Why does he say that he rejoices with joy unspeakable, yet he knew the kind of death he was going to die? That kind of death he was going to die did not have influence over him. The faith he had denied that kind of death to steal his joy. He had this joy. We will, we will look at one, one more example. We will look at the example of blind but mice. We will read Mark chapter 10. We will read verse 46 to 52. This is the story of but Myers. But Myers means son of Timaeus. And we, we, will, we, will read, we will read it in King James, then, then we will read it in... In, in the Passion Translation. But let's just read it in King James. And they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at this. Let's first pause there. But Myers is blind. And I believe but Myers had heard stories about Jesus. Even by the mere fact that he called him son of David. And he knew that wherever Jesus went, blind people saw. Miracles were happening. This is like you hearing the gospel, hearing the word. He didn't treat it casually. It was not something he just hears on a Sunday service and yeah, it's good we, then he shuts the Bible and waits for another Sunday service. No. He, I, I think every day he kept thinking about it and he kept thinking, maybe one day Jesus will also walk past here. Maybe one day he will come in this place. And you see that picture was painted and it kept becoming real. And then, because you see, when faith grows, actions come out of faith. So I believe, because this picture is painted every day, he thought, if I ever hear that Jesus is passing by, I will call out. I will holler. I will call out to Jesus. And 
he said he when he called out they are silencing him isn't that what happens to you now when everyone is saying oh during this season we need to be very careful the flu may go on for a whole year then you say no it shall not go on for a whole year they tell you oh no 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 don't get so excited this is what they were telling but myas You see you see now every business you need to safeguard yourself what if your business never recovers like no mine will stay afloat he say oh no you know you need to use some wisdom this is what they were telling but myas this is not new if you as a christian if you face such challenges you're not the first oh i believe by his stripes i was healed did the doctor say so this is what they were telling but myas let's go on and jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and they called the blind man saying unto him be of good comfort rise he called him the imagine jesus stood still do you, do you really believe that the crowd that was wronging jesus didn't have a need all those people didn't have a need what made jesus stand still there is one man that called out in faith I believe but mass was not the only beggar in that city. I believe but mass was not seated begging alone. They used to have beggars on on a street. They used to have many beggars. Even like today in towns where there are beggars all over the world, it is rare that you're going to find one beggar in the whole city. If you see a beggar, you're just going to see a few blocks down the road there is going to be another beggar. But but mass is the one that caused Jesus to stop. Why? He had seen this picture when these stories when he had these stories and you see these are the stories we hear from the bible every day you go to church and the pastor is telling you in all these things we are more than conquerors we are more than conquerors do you just go home and trash your bible do you just go home and just think about it that was something religious or do you let it paint the picture do you let it paint the picture that hope and when a time comes when the evil day comes that hope picture that thing you've been hoping for becomes a reality it manifests yeah let's go on and he casting away his garment rose and came to jesus now let's let's go to the let's read from the passion translation let's just read verse 50 just verse 50 alone from the passion translation so he threw off his beggar's cloak jumped up and made his way to jesus he threw away his beggar's cloak last Sunday I tried to explain this but there was not enough time but the, uh, it was a beggar's cloak you're given this cloak for a livelihood this is what gives you this is what gives you permission to beg if you didn't have it no matter how blind you are it was illegal for you to beg how does but mass throw away this cloak or his license before his eyes are opened that is what faith does faith, you see faith is not mental ascent it is possible for one to just throw away the cloak and they will suffer but you see if you've been meditating on the word of god hope is rising in you you've been seeing the picture for so long very soon you're going to act you're going to act very soon you're going to act faith is going to make it tangible Faith is going to make the unseen a reality. But Myers thought about this. I believe maybe he thought about it for long. He kept thinking every day, one day Jesus may pass in this place. And maybe it began that way. One day he may pass here. One day he may come around. Then the next week it changed into I think he's actually going to pass. I think he will actually come. Then it turned into I think it is very soon. I feel like Jesus is about to pass here. I think every day he started asking, "Did you hear that Jesus was to pass here?" I think he was. You see, faith is rising because of the picture, because of the hope. And when he was told Jesus is passing, it was not a shock to him. It was a surprise but not a shock. He already knew what to do. Faith had prepared. He knew what to do. He knew what to do. Faith had painted the picture. It's just like when you're getting born again, when you hear the word that we we were sinners, we were so bad, we had fallen away from God. Jesus came. He paid the price for us. He died an ugly death. He suffered. I'm telling you that time I had such a sermon before the preacher could say pray this prayer with me. 
I'm telling you, if, 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 if the preacher had stopped and not asked me to pray the prayer, I would have asked, what should I do? Faith had already put an action in me. A picture had been painted. Hope was risen. And I would ask him, so what should I do? So by the time he says, pray this prayer with me, man, I was so sure my life is changing. I was so excited. I was praying that prayer with with everything in me. Lord Jesus, be Lord of my life. Transform my life. I'm a new creature. It was so real. This is the same thing that happened to Bart Myers. Because he had been meditating about upon this every day. He had been thinking about it. I believe when he has Jesus is here. Jesus is passing. I believe he called out, Son of David, have mercy on me. They told him, shut up. But it's, and, and that is how the faith walk is. <laughs> the criticism that you get from people, the people that scorn you and laugh at you, it is like they just fuel your faith the more. Because the picture you've seen is louder than their criticism. The picture you see is louder than their discouragement. You go for it. You see it and go for it. You go for it. You're like, by his stripes I was healed. By his stripes I was healed. I shall not lack. I shall not lack. I am loved. You just keep going. You just keep going because it becomes a reality. So, but Mass didn't get offended. He, did, he, he didn't come back. After he got healed, he didn't sit down these people and say, didn't you guys tell me to keep quiet? No, 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 no. They were not, they were, they were not an issue for him. This thing that he had seen transcended. It was beyond them. And when, when, when he says he threw away his cloak, why? Because he knew he would never need it. He knew that when I meet Jesus, I can't stay blind. When I meet, if Jesus has said, come, if the master is calling, he does not call to leave you the same. He does not call to leave you the same. Whatever he's given us this faith for is not meant to leave you the same. It is not meant to leave you the same. That is why we are preaching the gospel during this time. That is why we are reaching everyone. That is what, why we are not, we are not, we are not, uh, sunk, we are not there just worried about this season or when is the season coming to run and we are not down there. Why? Because we have his word. We have the word of faith. We have a living hope. We know he's a reality. But Myers heard the master is calling. The master is calling. And you see, he may be calling you in different ways today. It may be your health. It may be your children that you're believing for. It may be somebody that you've been believing for to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But if you hear the master is calling, man, it moves from hope. It moves from that picture. The unseen becomes tangible. He threw away his clock. He threw away his license because he knew that reality has come. He received his sight before his physical eyes were opened. That, is, that takes us back to Hebrews 11.1. 1. He says, evidence of things not seen. Evidence of things hoped for. Faith makes them a reality. You're healed before your symptoms change. It becomes a reality. And like I'm telling us, this is not mental ascent. This is a reality. This is, it's not something that you now just think it positively. No, it becomes a reality. It becomes a reality that it surely supersedes whatever may be seen or whatever may be happening around. Blind Batmas received his sight when he met Jesus because the picture was painted. And when this picture was painted, faith took a hold of it. Faith grasped it. He saw himself seeing before his eyes were open. As you meditate on the word of God, a picture will be painted. And you see, as you dwell there long enough, it will move from hope to faith. It will move from postponing things because it will become a reality. The testimony I gave you last week, that I was kneeling on that floor, and all of a sudden, I knew that I was healed. I didn't first check if the symptoms were there. I knew it and knew it. There was nothing that you could do to make me doubt it. Even if I had checked and the symptoms were still there, it would not change what I had known. I'd go to, my eyes had been opened to another world. 
I had stepped into a new reality. I had stepped into a new world. That is what happens in this faith walk. You get to that place. You get to that place where the things you hope for become a reality. They become sin. And as a child of God, there are many blessings. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. 2 Peter 1 3, he's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already given them to us. He's not going to give them to us. Why are we not experiencing them? Maybe we've not taken this walk of faith seriously. But from today, as you take it seriously, you're going to realize that many of these things, faith reaches out and makes them a reality. It reaches out and makes them a reality. Peace, joy, tranquility, and other things that we need, that they become a reality. That they become a reality to us. And you see, the first thing he says about faith, or that is very key about faith, especially in the New Testament, that just shall live by faith. Only by faith shall you be justified. Maybe you've not had this relationship with him. It is good to start here. You can also receive the measure of faith to start with. But you see, you have to become a son. You have to become a daughter. And if you've been thinking, what can I do? What can I do? My parents were Christians, or they've never been Christians. I've heard there is a hell, there is heaven, there is a hell, but you don't need to go to hell. It was not created for you. It was created for the devil. And there is heaven, there is life after here. Eternal life continues. There is a life after you leave this earth. And that life matters a lot. There is a life where God becomes a reality, where he's not religion where he speaks to you and you speak to him. You walk with him. He is your friend. A place where your sins are forgiven, where there is no more guilt, there is no more condemnation. And you can get into that place today. And that picture there, you can receive it. It can become a reality by your faith. And I want to pray with you. I want to give you this opportunity for you to get into this relationship with him for him to become your reality, for you to know that your sins were forgiven, your sins were paid for, that 2,000 years ago, somebody bled and died on your behalf. Somebody paid the price that you could not have paid for yourself so that you could have a relationship with your heavenly Father. I want you to pray this with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for thank me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I know. I know that I've not lived my life for you. That I've not lived my life for you. But today, but today, I give myself. I give myself. My spirit. My spirit. My soul. My soul. My body. My body. For you. For you. Thank you that the price was paid. Thank you that the price was paid. I receive that forgiveness. I receive that forgiveness. I receive your righteousness. I receive your righteousness. From today. From today. I will walk in you. I will walk in you. I will live in you. I will live in you. Because I am your son. Because I am your son. I am your daughter. I am your daughter. Be real to me. Be real to me. Be real to me. Be real to me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Give me. Give me. Full awareness. Full awareness. Of my righteousness. Of my righteousness. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Give me full awareness. Give me full awareness. Of my sonship. Of my sonship. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. I believe. I believe. That I have just started living. That I have just started living. And this will be a glorious life. And this will be a glorious life. It will be a walk of faith. It will be a walk of faith. Thank you. Thank you. For setting my feet. For setting my feet. On a new path. On a new path. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 If you've just prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. You are born again. And we would like to help you even to walk in this walk of faith. We would love to help you to grow in your journey. 
contact us. Information will be on your screen. Tell us that you've received Christ today. We will give you some materials. We'll give you some, some things to listen to to help you grow. And you're there. Maybe there are certain things that you've been believing for. There, are, You've been believing for healing in your body of a beloved one. You've been believing for different things. Maybe your faith has been shaken during this period. There is so much fear. You see, the, at times we, 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 we call fear or paranoia. We call it wisdom. But you see, wisdom does not wisdom doesn't make you wisdom is not binding fear is what binds you if every day you you you, you just you, you you can't enjoy your family you can't that is fear you may brand it as wisdom but that is fear this freedom you can have you see we read psalm 91 and it says a thousand shall fall on my side ten thousand on my right side but it shall not come near me Man, that scripture can only become a reality to you if it is mixed with faith. It becomes a reality to you. We are taking precautions. We are also, we are putting on our masks as we move out there. We have hand sanitizers and all this. But you see, our security is not in those things. Our picture has been painted of us being safe. Faith has risen in us. I know that a thousand will fall on my side, ten thousand shall fall on my side, but it shall not come near me. That is what I know because the word has been mixed with faith. So even there in your house right now, as the Holy Spirit ministers to you, man, the presence of God is coming to your house. I know it. I know it right now. That some of even just the atmosphere in your, like the, you, you're going to feel a sudden change in your room, wherever you're watching from. The presence of God is right there to help your faith, to help you. To help you, the basis of faith is knowing the will of God, what God has said. The lies that you've believed, that that sickness may be to teach you something, that that sickness only brings glory to God by it being healed. And healing is coming to you there. Look at blind Bart Myers. Let that make hope rise in you and appropriate that picture. Receive it by faith. Right now, wherever you are, that it is not time depression shall not have you no matter how bad the season is you shall be of good cheer because he overcame the world whatever is happening your business might be going down but this has just come to pass may your eyes be open to see the light at the end of the tunnel this season shall not take you down you're coming out of this season more than a victor you're coming out of this season greater than you came into it there is going to be a great testimony after this season. God is for you. God is on your side. This word of God mixed with faith makes the unseen tangible. The things that those around you may not see. People from today will start asking you, why are you so happy? Why are you so overjoyed? Why do you have, this, why do you have such peace when people are not peaceful? When everyone is worried, when everyone is panicking, it is because you've seen the picture. You've seen a better picture. And I want to pray with you. I want you right now in your house or wherever you're watching from, I want you to start thanking God that you have the measure of faith. And I want you to start thanking him for his word and for the picture that his word has painted. If you've been sick, I want you to thank him. Just start as simple as thanking him. Thank you that by your stripes I was healed. If, it, if, if you've been in luck, I want you to thank him. Thank you that you provide all my needs according to your riches in glory. If you've been feeling condemned, feeling not worthy, I want you to thank him. Tell him thank you that Jesus paid the price for me. Thank you that he was raised for my justification. Thank you if you've been feeling anxiety. You, you thank him that it is not your portion. Thank him that there is a better life for you. Tell him thank you, Father. Thank you that you've promised me better. Thank you that there is something beautiful for me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everyone. Thank you for everyone that has tuned in. Thank you that even as they pray along, that we join our faith with their faith. I release healing even right now 
I release healing into their homes, healing into their bodies right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the makaribre tora ba shakaya laba ratele me sheketele bebebe rebo sakata laba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is somebody, a gentleman, that God is healing you. There is pain you've been having in your in your shoulder. The mobility of your shoulder has not been so good. There is pain that you've been having. But right now, I release that healing power to flow through that arm in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you, the presence of God is so strong upon you. So strong upon you. There is conviction that is coming upon you. You're experiencing the love of God and you're wondering, why have I never said yes to him? If he loved me like this, why have I never said yes to him? Why have I never said yes to him? It is a great opportunity for you to say yes to him. It is a great opportunity for you to receive what he has for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you're there and you've been believing for the prayer language, for a new language, for him to fill you with his Holy Spirit, just raise both hands. And right now, I pray, Father, fill them with your Holy Spirit. New tongues, new tongues, new tongues, the tongues flow out of them as they worship you. Right now, receive, receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit in your homes, in your houses. Every lie of the devil, every lie of the devil, we pull it down. May your eyes be opened to the new normal. May your eyes be opened to the new reality in God. A life that transcends whatever the devil has thrown at you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And that you come out of this season lifted up. You come out of this season sowing higher and higher than you've ever been. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak love. Those who have felt who have felt rejected, those who have been feeling like no one cares for them. Holy Spirit, let the truth that you'll never leave nor forsake them, let that become a reality to them right now. Let that become tangible to them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for every healing that is happening right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for every testimony. Thank you, Father. The unseen is becoming tangible. The unseen is becoming reality to us. The unseen is becoming a reality to whoever is tuned in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you even for the body of Christ. Thank you for the Christians that are being persecuted worldwide. Those that are watching. Those that are hiding even to be able to have service. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your angels are there. Your angels shield them, that they will get out of this situation. That gracious Father, food will be availed to them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you that these authorities that have tried to oppress them shall not succeed anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, encourage them. Lift them. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, Father. We give you honor. You're such an amazing God. You're such a good God. You're such an awesome God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this word that you've given to us. Thank you that whenever we pray, you answer. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you glory. Even this week is going to be a week like we've never experienced that we will testify of it. It will be a week so different. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. If you prayed, I believe. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I, be, I believe there is a testimony there where you are. I, I believe this. Write to us. Tell us whatever God has done. Uh, Continue walking in this faith. Continue walking in this journey. Something so beautiful has begun in your life. 
something so beautiful, something so incredible, something so incredible has begun in your life. Continue in this walk of faith. Put to silence whatever is contrary to the word of God. Stay in this faith. God is doing amazing things. God bless you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. We will see you next Sunday. God bless you so much.